Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we're going to look at the May June 2019 Agricultural Science Single Award for CISEC Paper 2. So that's the May June 2019 Agricultural Science Single Award for CISEC Paper 2. So today we're going to be looking at question 1 today. And so we're going to just jump right in, but before we jump in, we know what to do. Like the video subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you know when learn skn drops the rest of this paper all right and so we have question section one here number one farmer george cultivates vegetable crops on his half acre organic farm which is situated on a hillside and obtains water from a river that runs below his farm so the first question off the bat now define the term organic farming what is organic farming and so we all know what organic farming is organic farming is farming without the use of artificial fertilizers or artificial amendments and things like that so it's farming using natural natural ways of controlling the pests and diseases and also natural ways of enriching or fertilizing the soil so that's basically Far organic farming it's farming using our crop production using natural methods natural methods for pest and disease control nat natural methods for soil enhancement so all that is organic farming so the, the essence is it's farming done using natural methods natural means that's organic farming in a nutshell so two marks for that one and then they continue to ask state one disadvantage of organic farming one disadvantage now there are multiple disadvantages of organic farming but they ask for one so let's go one would be of course it's more labor intensive than commercial farming with um, high-tech machinery and things like that i mean let's be honest when you use your artificial pesticides and those things they get the job done quickly they're not the most uh, the most safe but they're efficient they're killers basically so one disadvantage of course it's more labor intensive that's one two it can be more expensive three it uses a lot more land space that's an excess advantage right there because to get the same yield that you want in terms of quantity you have to take a lot more land than if you're using conventional or traditional methods of farming so more expensive more uh labor intensive and also it takes more land so it takes more land for organic farming to take place. so that's three disadvantages right there what else also the let's say the yield the output tends to be somewhat smaller than other ways of farming other conventional ways of farming because if you compare organic egg versus a uh, conventional farming egg the egg would be larger from the conventional one same way the animals if you're in livestock rearing the animals reared with the let's say the chemicals tend to be a lot bigger than those reared with just natural means so that's another way you can look at it so i gave you four you can choose one and get the one mark for that question very simple very straightforward patry explain one way in which Farmer George's organic farm can benefit the environment now. So one way, explain. So let's go. No, it's more environmentally friendly. How, how, why? Because it allows for, it, it, it's a natural way of farming. And so the soil and the air and the water will not become contaminated with artificial fertilizers or pesticides or anything like that so it helps prevent contamination of the oil the air the water the soil and things like that if you want to put it if you want to break them down and say it prevents contamination of water air land soil that's good because that's one way also it because a natural way of doing things it tends to foster a more balanced approach to to, to 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 farming it's more nature and farming are more balanced it's, there's a more balanced approach in terms of nature and farming and agriculture it's more balanced because you're trying to use more natural methods more natural ways so it's more in tune with nature so that's the next advantage for a, a benefits the environment and so you'll find that if you're doing organic farming you'll find that you have more you know pollinators around 
So that's a good thing. More pollinators around because you have more natural, naturally occurring flowers and plants and things like that. So there are more natural pollinators around. And so that can add to the overall balance and enrichment naturally of the environment of the soil. So that's how it is more beneficial. So it, and again, again, it reduces, again, besides contaminants like pesticides and those things, it reduces the use of machinery and as such, it reduces the 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 carbon output into the atmosphere so you can reduce some level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere let's take a quick look at the textbook right here all right and so the textbook has it right here becoming organic can be expensive so that's a disadvantage and time consuming for small farmer as i said before there is usually a fee to be paid for inspections and certification and a lot of record keeping and paperwork however the principles of organic farming encourage maintenance of ecological balance as i was saying just now the balance in the atmosphere the ecological balance the nature and biodiversity so it encourages biodiversity and that's what i was talking about when i said the, the pollinators and it fosters more a harmonious interaction with animals so biodiversity meaning that where pesticides might kill off animals kill birds kill bees kill things the organic farming actually encourages more animals to be so if around your farm so you'll find that you go out in your farm and you see a lot of different birds bees insects different ones around because they are more attracted to the more natural aspect of your farm and so those are some advantages and disadvantages right there so again those are some from the textbook you can use if you desire to outline the advantages and disadvantages of organic farming again look at this one method of weed control hand weeding of course that's going to be difficult so it's more it's more manual it's difficult it's a harder way to do farming than other types of farming but any of the advantages right there all right good so let's move on now next one farmer george recently rented Farmer George recently rented Farmer Mary a plot of land adjacent to his farm to establish a vegetable plot. Mary used genetically modified seeds, pesticides, and artificial fertilizers to grow her crops. To grow her crops, Farmer George has applied for organic certification for his farm, and his application was denied. Okay, so you see a situation right there. Three max. Let's say he gave Mary a plot of land next to him, but he applied now, but he was denied. Using the information from the scenario above, so just three reasons why Farmer George's application was denied, and of course, the three reasons are right there, right? Mary is using genetically modified food, modified seed, she's using pesticides, and she's using artificial fertilizers. And what they say about uh, organic farming is natural, and so it cannot be used in anything that has been modified or is artificial, and so you find that. For example, Mary might have a plot next to one of the, the, the one of the prerequisites of certification is that you're not supposed to be located within a certain distance of conventional farms because of these very same reasons. Because of these reasons, you're not supposed to be located close to certain farms when you are applying to become certified organic because genetically modified seeds, when those seeds grow into a seedling, a plant, and pollination starts happening they might be cross-pollination with your organic stuff and so your output might not be totally fully organic because there's cross-pollination with the gen genetically modified produce and yours and so that would not allow you to be certified also pesticides there's pesticide drift one day mirror might be um, using a pesticide and the wind come picks it up blow it on your farm blow it on your produce one time they are contaminated and so they cannot be deemed organic and of course artificial fertilizer same way you might go into the soil into the water run down close to your plot and that would contaminate your plot and so you cannot be certified organic because of all of those things that Mary are doing on her farm that is just next to yours and so if you outline and explain how those three things can impact George's farm and how then you could get your tree marks for that question quite easily all right good moving right along moving nicely along uh the last one for question one 
The Minister of Agriculture of Country A is asking the government for an increase in the budgetary allocation for agriculture. So just two reasons the minister could use to justify the request for an increase in the budgetary allocation for agriculture. Two reasons, huh? Very simple. I mean, the easiest one is food security. That's one of the main reasons people use, right? Food security. That's one of the overarching reasons that people use to justify budgetary increase, food security. Right? But let's, let's break it down. So, what do they, what, how, how, why, why you might need increase in the budget? First and foremost, for incentives. The minister might need money to incentivize, fa incentivize farmers to produce more. And so you cannot do that unless you have more money. An incentive is a financial, is, is something of a financial assistance where you encourage, you have to reduce the, the production cost of farming so that you can entice persons to come into farming. So you might want to give them duty free concession, reduce costs on inputs, things like that. So you need these budgetary increases, budgetary constraints in order to get more money to use the incentives. So that's one reason you need more incentives. Two, you want to, I mean, it's an application question right here. You want to launch more programs to bring in the youth and women into agriculture and things like that. So you want to, because the farming population is becoming older and older, more youth and so are not involved. And so you want to drive youth involvement in farming and things like that. So of course, you go to the prime minister and say, okay, look, we need to involve youth and women and, you know, get the farming out there. So we need to promote these things, make programs, but you need money. And so you need to increase monies to get this thing done. And of course, like I said, for security, you need to increase overall output of the sector as to increase overall output of the sector you are going to want more money to be allocated to your budget to prevent against climate change prevent against to import the best planting materials things like that so it's a very easy one very very easy you know application common sense why you need more money in agriculture how would it encourage how would it advance the sector so there's two reasons that minister could use to justify the request for an increase in the budget allocation of agriculture I see, so again, you want to launch programs, uh, food security, incentives, we do help them to reduce the production costs and things like that. All those are reasons you might want to list for why the minister might want to increase the allocation to the agricultural budget. All right, of course, again, of course, to hire more persons, you have to pay more people, increase the role, your, your payroll, because you may want to hire more extension officers. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can use. It's just a common sense question. You can't get that one wrong. I don't. I know you can't get that one wrong. All right. So that's question number one for the May June 2019 CSEC paper for agriculture science single award. All right. So we're gonna study here for now. And if you want to know when Learn SKN drops another video, like, subscribe, and hit the bell to know when that happens. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.